morning, another day, and some more experiments. Now, a friend of mine gave me this a couple of days ago. It's a washing machine motor, but it's a bit different. Or maybe it's not. Maybe modern uh, washing machine motors are like this. This, even though it came off a single phase washing machine, is a three phase motor. So I'm thinking that maybe some washing machines have an inbuilt VFD, variable frequency drive. That way they can get all the different speeds without a complicated motor. So let's just have a look at the label and then we're going to experiment as if there was any doubt whatsoever that that would happen. So here's the motor and the first thing we notice is it's relatively small for a washing machine motor which it's three phase there's three motors in there fair enough the next thing is 2006 okay so it's not that modern it's 2018 now so let's have a look at the other label so here's the other label 195 volts come on focus properly 3.7 amps 800 watts 290 Hertz at 17,000 revs Okay, there's some numbers we can work on. So, as we know, the speed of an induction motor is regulated by the frequency. Hence, a variable frequency drive will change the speed. So, what we need to do is, we're going to try and run this on 50 cycles. So 290 is very close to 300, so 300 cycles per second divided by 50 is 6. So we take 1700, seven, no, so we take 17,000 RPM and divide that by 6. And that roughly equals 2,800 revs. But we'll be putting a bit higher voltage in there. So um, we might have to fiddle somehow. We'll just see whether the windings will handle a slightly higher voltage. It will mean that more current will pass through it. So more than 3.7 amps. So let's just have a look at the windings. Focus. They do look rather chunky. The wire does anyway. But what's the worst that can happen? It can get hot. So I think we have an experiment coming on. So we'll put, let's have a look at the connector block. So those two red wires go to the taco so we can ignore them so we just have three wires there ignore the grey coloured on the end because that's just a link but those three wires there are the three phases so I'm assuming the first thing to do is to check that all three sets of coils are the same resistance that's a plan so we've got the meter set on 200 ohms and let's just poke that up there and up there 6.4 
6.5. So they're all very similar, all the same. So that'll do. On with some rough and ready wiring. Right, so the capacitor that I'm going to use is a 8 microfarad. But experience tells me to check that it's a 6. But let's see what happens anyway. So what we do and if you're unfamiliar with this go and look at my very early three phase running a three phase motor off single phase uh, videos there's six I think and they are really quite early but let's just see we can see these two white ones will be the mains in and it doesn't matter which way but let's say for instance that's the live the live comes along here and goes into one of the windings and it also goes through the capacitor to another set of windings or connection and the neutral comes along and goes to the third one then we have power between there and there there and there and there and there so that's it so what we want now is the quick stop so we can or the quick connect so we can do that and then there's this loop here which I'm going to use with the clamp meter to see what the current draw is. So we'll be back to you in a second. Right, so here's the quick connect. We put that as the live actually. Not that it matters. Okay. Now for those people who want to comment, huh, I know that that will charge up and depending upon where on the cycle uh, you disconnect it, it could remain charged up. So you need to short it out before you mess with it. Okay, so there we go. So let's plug this in. Tell you what I'll do. I'll connect that like that. And just briefly plug it in. Well, it runs. I don't think it likes that um, 6 microfarad. It's a bit vibrating. Let's try it again. Yeah, let's try a bigger capacitor. So I've got another capacitor here. Let's put it on the 20 microfarad scale. And that's rubbish because that's supposed to be a 16 and it's actually only 5. Yeah, that could be well get thrown away. Right, these are out of fluorescent light fittings. So that one says it's supposed to be 16. Well, that's a 12, 13. Okay, so that's probably worth trying. And this one, is supposed to be an 8, and it is 7.5. So we'll try the... Uh, the 13 microfarad one and see what happens. So that's the 13 microfarad. Okay, so let's just see what happens. Maybe it's the fact that it's just on that board. Let's put it on the floor. There was 
just a wisp of smoke there. Maybe that capacitor was too big, causing too much high voltage. But I suspect this experiment is going slightly wrong. Here's just an extra. That's a 4 microfarad capacitor. Yeah, yeah. The blue smoke dragon. It's the fire. It's the first signs of it. It's just not happening. As I say, anybody who's got any more info, love to hear it. Might work on 110. Right, got a 110 volt transformer there. So let's just see. Final shake of the dice and all that sort of nonsense. Let's plug it in, see what happens. Right, they don't want to know, so the capacitor's not big enough now. So let's just change that. Okay, there's a bigger capacitor. There we go, it will work on 110 quite happily. And that's a 16 microfarad capacitor. And it will be um, 2800 revs because it's on 50 cycles. What the power is, we'll just have to get the clamp meter and find out what the current is. You can't see that. 2.6 amps at 110 volt is uh, 260 watts. A bit more call it 300 watts so it's now that motor is quite happy tickling away but it's a 300 watt motor which is effectively about well there's 735 watts to the horsepower so that's about a one-third horsepower motor got there in the end. Hope you found this interesting. Catch up with you soon.